Hi everyone, it's Chuck Allgood back again with another refrigerant checkup. Again, these videos are intended to be brief, informative, focused on a particular subject, and really designed to answer your questions. Uh, we get a lot of questions frequently asked over and over, so certainly keep sending them in. Uh, email is fine, or through our website at option.com. But today I'd like to answer one that we've gotten a, a fair amount over the last few years, and that really is what exactly is an HFO? How is that different from refrigerants I'm used to? So briefly, HFO, the O stands for olefin. So an HFO is a hydrofluoroolefin. Like the CFCs were chlorofluorocarbons and the HFCs were hydrofluorocarbons. HFOs are a lot like HFCs, but that olefin is what makes a difference. And olefin is really a fancy chemical term that chemists like myself like to use to describe a carbon-carbon double bond with inside of a molecule. So the atoms are the same, they're just connected slightly differently. And that carbon-carbon bond, that olefin, really gives them some unique properties. And the one unique property that the olefin gives the HFOs that makes them different than the HFCs is a very short atmospheric lifetime. That olefin is very amenable to reacting with hydroxyl radicals if it were to leak out into the atmosphere where there's hydroxyl radicals present. And those hydroxyl radicals will break down the HFO so it has a very short atmospheric lifetime, very little chance for it to impact uh, the environment. So the HFOs as a class, uh, some of the basic molecules can be uh, mildly flammable. And I'm gonna probably do a, a, another video or two around flammability and how that's determined, so be sure to check those out. But the basic properties of an HFO can be compared to an HFC, if we put them up on the screen here. So very common molecule refrigerant, uh, R134A is an HFC. Something very similar, R1234YF is an HFO. And if you look at the structures and the atoms, they all look pretty similar, with the exception of that olefinic bond in there. But what that olefinic bond does really shows up when you look at things like the atmospheric lifetime and compare the big difference, the short atmospheric lifetime of the HFO versus the longer one for the HFC. Well, things like boiling point, densities, those other properties that are important in refrigerants remain the same. So again, the atmospheric lifetime is directly related to the GWP, the global warming potential of a value. So you can see when you end up calculating the global warming potential, what a big difference you get between something like R134A and R1234YF. And this is one reason why uh, certain applications, such as automotive air conditioning, mobile AC, converted directly from 134A to 1234YF. So just about every new car rolling off the assembly line uh, these days is going to end up with 1234YF as a refrigerant under the hood. And I'll probably make another video about how the automotive industry made that challenge because they went from a non-flammable to a mildly flammable. But their engineers uh, were able to do that. And when you consider what they're dealing with in the automotive industry, it kind of makes sense that they could move quicker than the rest of the industry towards flammable refrigerants dealing with gasoline, motor oil, brake fluid, other flammable fluids. Uh, but again, I hope this helps. I hope this explains what an HFO is. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, the basic HFOs are being developed into new products and blended with other things so we can meet all the needs for all the different segments in commercial refrigeration, air conditioning. So there's a lot going on with HFOs uh, that I'll be sharing in other videos. Hope this was helpful. Again, send us your questions. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks.